the 2020 MacBook Air base model with the M1 chip. Is it worth all the hype? Well, it kind of is, but let's talk about it. All right, so I've been using this device here for almost a week now. Today is a Sunday. I bought this on Tuesday, so I got it on a launch day, and I've been playing with it. And I've got to say, um, it's been very impressive. So what really drew me to this device, what made me want to get it, was the M1 chip and Apple touting that you can run iPad apps on this, which to me um, seems like a bargain, especially when you look at what this costs, which the base model is $9.99. You can get it for $8.99 with the education discount through the Apple Store, which is what I did. So I got this for $8.99 plus tax. But if you compare it to a iPad Pro, especially the 12.9 inch, then you add the Magic Keyboard, then you're gonna be, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred, even up to fifteen hundred dollars. So this really is a bargain uh, if you compare it to an iPad Air, ironically enough. When you compare this to a tablet, this is the better value. But like I said, what drew me to it was all the uh, performance claims. So like everybody, I woke up on Tuesday, I was still on the fence about buying the base model and I started watching, you know, the reviews that were cranked out with the performance. And it, it really sold me on it. So I was like, well, right now they're in the return period, so I can buy it, I can try it. If I don't like it, I'll return it. But um, this is gonna be a keeper, to be honest with you. I was leery about getting the base model with the only eight gigs of RAM, but the way the M1 chip manages it, it seems to not be an issue. So all the videos you've seen of this thing, rendering 4K video and all that is legit. So. If you're running Final Cut Pro, or in my case, I own Final Cut Pro, I tested it with it, it works fantastic. Um, there is one con that I'll get to in a second, but the other thing I wanted to try with this is LumaFusion for the iPad Pro. So um, the good thing is if you've owned an iPad, if you purchased LumaFusion, you can use it on here for free. Now LumaFusion supports it, so obviously you have to have bought it, but you can download the actual iPad app for this and it worked great. So that was one of the major questions that I got in the comments on my unboxing was, does Luma, Luma Fusion work with this? And it absolutely does. So it, it crushes the video, works well. Obviously this is not a touchscreen device, so you're limited by using the mouse and or keyboard shortcuts, but it works well. I'm gonna do a separate video on that just to kind of show you a demo, but definitely, works well. Now, the con I mentioned with, um, everybody worries about the thermals with this, and all the videos that I've seen, everybody was, you know, they were exporting their videos, they were um, editing their videos in Final Cut Pro, <clears throat> and they were saying that it didn't really get hot, that it just got warm. And that is true with the exception of one thing I found. So, um, actually editing 4K within Final Cut Pro, or LumaFusion, it stayed warm to the touch, but not hot, not, you know, worrisome. But um, when you exported it, it stayed the same. So again, wasn't a big deal. Fast export times, it didn't heat up. But I did find with Final Cut Pro, if I have background rendering enabled, um, you know, whatever you have it set for, basically background rendering allows it to kind of crunch the video, get it in the format you want while you're idle. So if you're you know, doing an edit and you decide, all right, I'm gonna work on a script for a minute, it'll automatically start to render this video in the background. And that is where this thing heats up like crazy, like it was worrisome. So I had a video, I was actually playing with 8K video, Final Cut Pro started to render the video in the background and this thing got so ridiculously hot. So um, essentially the CPU was right in this area here and it got worrisome hot, I mean, it was uh, definitely a little bit alarming how hot it got with the background rendering. So, so what I did is I went into Final Cut Pro in the settings and you can turn off background rendering. And I haven't had that issue since. So even with background rendering off, this thing will render, especially 4K video, about almost twice real time. So if it's a five minute video, it's probably gonna spit it out and export it in about two and a half minutes-ish. So. No issues there, but I just wanted to get that out there. That's the only time I've seen this thing heat up and even start to slow down was when it was 
rendering video in the background with Final Cut Pro. So you can fix that again by using LumaFusion or you can just turn off that feature in Final Cut. But other than that, this has been fantastic. Now I'm a fairly diehard PC Windows fan. I've owned nothing but Surface devices for quite a while. This is the first uh, Mac computer that I've had in probably five years. I mean, you can go back on my channel and look at when I did a review of one, but this thing has definitely converted me back to the cult of Mac. I mean, just the battery life alone on this, uh, Apple touts 18 hours of video playback, and I can say that this thing uh, definitely lives up to that hype. So the battery life on this has been fantastic. I mean, really, you probably only have to charge this thing every few days. Um, and like I said, performance has been awesome. Now, uh, real quick, you've probably seen all the videos, but this has got just two Thunderbolt 3 ports, um, and it's got a headphone jack, and that's it. Now, there's no uh, external GPU support for this, which I think is probably a limitation of the M1 chip, but this has a AMOLED display. It's got a fingerprint sensor on it that works well. I mean, this is essentially the same design that um, the last MacBook Air had, with the exception of, I think it is a different keyboard style, whereas the first gen had the butterfly keys. This has got the newer, whatever, newer old design. But the keyboard on this is really good. It's a nice typing experience. Keys are clickly, clicky, types well, and I like the large trackpad. So for me, it was a little bit jarring going back to Mac OS and kind of relearning that because everything is opposite as far as when you open and close stuff. It's on the left versus opposed on Windows. It's on the right, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, that's just me having to get comfortable with the OS again. But it definitely made me a believer. Um, I'm totally definitely going to keep this, so I already ordered a skin for it. But the performance of this is awesome. So um, in this case, the hype is real. So if you were on the fence about getting this and worried about is 8 gigabytes going to be enough? Is the base model with only 7 GPU cores as opposed to 8 going to be enough? And the answer is absolutely yes. Especially if you don't really do video editing, then this, you know, I can't say anything but good things about it. The battery performance is great. And even if you do video editing, you know, if you're just doing 4K video especially, this thing will definitely do it. But if you use Final Cut Pro, the one thing I recommend is if you disable background rendering, it will definitely save your CPU from heating up. Or you could always just get a cooling mat, um, which I went ahead and ordered for this. Just when I do edit video, I keep it on a cooling mat with a fan just to try and um, protect the CPU and improve the longevity of it because thermals is the number one thing that's going to kill these things. But other than that, if you have any specific questions on this, I'm happy to test it. But there's already a million videos out there. But the thing I wanted to say that, yes, the hype is real. This performs just as good as Apple said it would. And all the videos out there of this thing are definitely on point. The only thing that I haven't seen is people mentioning that this does heat up in Final Cut Pro specifically when you've got background rendering on. So as always, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was just a quick video. I plan on doing more on this device, especially showcasing some of the iPad apps, uh, but I just wanted to get something out there uh, to let you know, yep, this thing is definitely worth it, worth the money, worth the hype. So as always, if you guys enjoyed that, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed, appreciate it if you do so. Thanks.